What's up guys, Jeremy here. So I just wanted to talk about my new camera system. I kind of wanted to talk about how I got to this point and why. I mean, you may think it's BS, so you, you still got the new camera. Yeah, you might be right. But anyways, so I got into this several years back talking to a buddy about photography. He wanted to, he was going on an elk hunt in Colorado and he wanted a camera to document his his hunt and just the scenery and stuff so being the inquisitive guy i am i went home and looked up on youtube the canon t7i that was the camera he was looking at and i came across a video by somebody talking about filmmaking with the t7i and that kind of that kind of re-sparked this flame i had from a kid wanting to film make but back then they only had that canon xl2 or whatever it is the one that looked with the body looked like it was curved red and white the thing was sweet three ccd chips but i could never afford that and that dream had kind of died so i see this t7i and i'm interested so i'll start looking into it more and looks pretty capable i'm watching the videos test videos and man this looks great so I run down to Best Buy, I buy one, come back and start watching videos like we all do, trying to learn. As I'm trying to learn, I keep coming across these other videos talking about other cameras and other gear. So I buy this slider. The slider's been sitting over there for four years. I buy this little steady pod thing, rarely used. Then I see the Canon 80D. Oh, shit, well, I guess I need this camera now. It's better all eye, better autofocus. I get that. And then people start talking about all oh, the micro jitters of this. You need the you need an IBIS. So I get that. Sony A6500. It can shoot 4K. Canon sucks. It can't shoot 4K. Then I get the A6500. Oh, that camera sucks. Low bat uh, bad battery life, uh, crop sensor, blah, blah, blah. So I get rid of that. I get the Sony a7 III. I was totally happy. That camera was great. Good autofocus, good picture, lots of different options. And then I start seeing it's only 8-bit. That sucks. Your camera sucks. Can't even do shit with 8-bit. I pick up a GH5 that somebody's selling kind of cheap because it has 10-bit. It has this tiny, tiny sensor and bad autofocus and low light is horrible. It just, it's garbage. So I get the Metabones and Sigma 18-35. to 35. Now I'm in there. Autofocus still sucks, though. I need something better. So I get rid of the GH5 and I get a Panasonic S1H. Netflix approved, dual gain ISO, 5.9K, external B-RAW, and ProRes RAW, blah, blah, blah. And that, it is an awesome camera. But then I, I don't want the Sony, because my Sony pictures won't match up with my Panasonic stuff. So I, Sony colors suck anyway, that's what they say, Sony sucks pick up an S5. So now I got an S5 and an S1H. All these big expensive lenses and I'm set. Netflix approved. 6K raw. Blah, blah, blah. And then I'm looking around and I'm like I'm filming myself in my back room and I'm filming a couple short films here and there. What do I need all this shit for? I need to just focus on more lights. If I'm going to spend money in filmmaking, I need to spend it on set design, costumes, lights, modifiers, things that make much more of a difference, ways to stabilize my shot. So I sold the S1H and the S5, and I had a clean slate. And then I said, what camera is going to be best for me? And I started looking around and I realized, yeah, the Micro Four Thirds at times wasn't quite what I was after. The full frame, it was cool, but I usually try to light stuff anyway. 
if something is a low light camera, I just see it as meaning I have to bring less lights than I would have brought anyway, not running around no lights. Light is what makes your picture have depth. So, and then that razor thin focus. And then another thing they don't tell you all the time, if you have an S1H, you're not really using the autofocus that much because it's not, it's not really reliable. Sometimes you use it, sometimes not, whatever. But if you're trying to manually focus on a 1.2 or 1.4, even a 1.8 lens on a full frame, the focus plane's about as thin as my ass hairs. So it's almost impossible to try to keep focus. Oh, oh, and then keep your shot framed and everything. At least for me. I mean, some people maybe could do that kind of stuff. I usually shoot at f4 to f5.6 anyway because I like to have some story going on, not just bokeh, bokeh, whatever it's called. I said, you know what? All the movies that I grew up loving, they were all shot on Super 35 size anyway, or APS-C, however you want to word it. So I started looking around, what is a capable APS-C camera with decent video autofocus, great, uh, great codecs, great colors, and to me, it really only left one option after everything I looked at. And that's this bad boy right here, the Fuji X-H2S. So I had never used Fuji before. I had always been intrigued, but there was always something like the little dongle for to use your headphones or 10-bit 420 or something always kept me from picking up one of those cameras but I always loved the look that was coming from them so I, I did quite a bit of research on all the current crop sensors this is the one that fit the bill for me it's very sturdy you can tell this is like a pro camera it has a full size HDMI that's one of the things I didn't like on the S5 it has USB-C so you could so you can uh, constantly power it that way. It shoots 40 frames a second photos with electronic shutter. It outputs Blackmagic RAW and ProRes RAW if you want to go that route. And it records ProRes, all three flavors, internally. It doesn't have 444 or 4, but... And even your uh, regular compressed codecs it can go up to 700 megabits, so a lot of information. And with that stack sensor, the rolling shutter is basically non-existent. The video autofocus is pretty good, and the dynamic range is really good. So that's what I was looking for in a camera. I wanted good dynamic range, good colors, good codecs, and... Oh, and I wanted IBIS in this. So that's kind of the reasons I sold everything. I bought this. I still had money left over. So the next short film I do, I'll have money to spend on stuff that's more important. I can make sure I'm getting the right location. I can make sure I have the wardrobe squared away. Any sort of other modifiers. Uh, haze. On one of my films, I used... Uh, a little fog machine. Halloween's coming up right now, and at Walmart, they always sell these little fog machines. And if you wait till after Halloween is over, you can go in there and buy these fog machines, bottles of fog, fake blood, all kinds of crap. It's usually like 75% off, at least 50, sometimes 75% off. So I try to buy that stuff every year to kind of have around. But I have the the haze in the can, and that stuff makes a big difference. Much more than I think. Much more than I think going from this top tier camera to that top tier camera to that top tier camera to that mid tier camera to that camera. All of these cameras now are doing pretty good, but I kind of I could have just held on to what I had. This was kind of more just for my mind my mindset of like 
I don't need to have all this crap. I want one thing and I'm just shrinking everything down. And like I said, you might say, well, yeah, you got the new, the new thing that everybody's talking about. Yeah, I did, but hopefully, I w hopefully you won't see another video on this channel for several years with anything other than this Fuji or this GH5S right here because I can't see why I would need anything else. This camera is totally capable, and the first week I got it, um, a friend of mine wanted a commercial for a local butcher shop. I went in and used it just with one small supplemental light and just this one lens, the 16 to 80 f4. And man, this thing worked like a champ. I shot in uh, ProRes 422. I shot some of it in F log 2, and then I shot some of it uh, just in the Eterna profile. And then I used the Eterna LUT on the F log 2 footage. And it looked the exact same. I mean, maybe if I was in a much more uh, dynamic scene, then that F-log would, would be the way to go. But that Eterna just looks great in here. And it's nice to be able to have something that looks like you did a color grade on it just straight out of the camera. And all the different options you want to do a noir film. They got the, they got, was it reverse classic neg or whatever it is. They got all these different, different things. Took it out and took some pictures of my kids and it just looked great. So that's why I switched. I'm rambling on. And also, hopefully this video has been in focus the whole time. If it has, surprise, I've been using continuous autofocus on the GH5S the whole time. So let me know what you think. Uh, if you think I'm a dumbass, just comment below. If you think um, chasing new cameras all the time is the way to go, let me know. Uh, if you have experience with these cameras, let me know. All right. So, hope to see you guys again soon. Peace out.